Grab your libations. No water here. I'll take two fingers of larceny. Your finest craft beer, barkeep. Cheers, everyone, and welcome to the Unfiltered Gentleman. And now, breaking the seal all over the finer things of life, Greg Scott and Dan. Oh, yeah. That thing's broken, everybody. Yep. Ooh, it's been gone and broken. That's right. Stuff. Broken. Breaking stuff. Breaking the seal. Yeah. All over. Yeah, you're going to be up every five minutes now. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody. It's the Unfiltered Gentleman. Thank you guys for listening Thank along. You all. Thanks for uh, telling friends about yes. the show. Yes. I'm Greg. Over there, that's Scott. I'm old. <laughs> yeah. Oh. That, that's Dan. I'm not old. <laughs> <laughs> Less old. Yeah. Yeah, I guess yeah, compared to these kids now, I yeah, would be these, old. These yeah. Old man Dan. I think Uh-oh. I'm the youngest of the group, aren't I? I think you are. Oh, oh my wow. God. Look at that. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> that is amazing. Pretty soon we'll be doing some kind of a senior citizen podcast. Yeah. <laughs> if we ever go on tour, it'll be like the yeah. senior tour plus it's, Greg. <laughs> instead of talking about craft beer, we can talk about mashed potatoes. Or yeah. <laughs> Creamed corn. <laughs> <laughs> Today's food of the week. <laughs> Cream corn. <laughs> That'd be great. Applesauce. Yeah. Hey, lot, I'll put my teeth in. Yeah, a lot of pudding talk on this Ooh, show. Yeah. Hey, uh-huh. beer for breakfast might be a real thing at that point. It's true. It's the only thing we can I eat. It is now. It's all we can choose. Yeah. Yeah, it's all we can choose is beer for breakfast. What else is there? That's right. Mm, touche. Uh, anyway, so welcome in. Thanks, everybody. Uh, shout out to Ashburn, Virginia. What? Dang. Yeah. Ashburn said, hey, Salt Lake, fuck you. Yeah. Wow. Fuck you, Salt Lake. We're taking moments. over. Yeah. Salt Lake needs to get back in the fight here. You know man. they will. Oh, yeah, of course. They're always there. You know what's interesting? Salt Lake dropped a couple of cities. Really? It was Ashburn and D.C. Oh, wow. Ashburn oh, wow. on top. Uh, Salt Lake better step it up. Yeah. Well, the good news about Salt Lake is they'll go banging on doors telling people to listen. That's true. <laughs> they, they love to bang on doors. <laughs> they got a lot of family members <laughs> to tell, <laughs> too. That's right. Yeah. Handing <laughs> out unfiltered gentleman <laughs> pamphlets. That'd be awesome. <laughs> yeah. Have you heard the word? <laughs> yep. That's right. <laughs> Oh, uh, yes. So, Burp word of the day. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> People open their door. They're just like, Fourth of July. <laughs> I guess now's a good time to tell everybody our burp word of the week is Fourth of July. Oh, what? cool. Okay. Yes. Happy Fourth of July, everybody. Happy. Yeah. There you go. Fireworks and whatever. Yeah. And stuff. <laughs> Fire. <laughs> blow, your, blow your fucking fingers off. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like, what's his name? The Giants. You down with JPP? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know me. <laughs> <laughs> That's his name, JPP. That's right. Uh, welcome in. All right. Uh, before we move on to what we're drinking, real quickly, don't forget, we have our ringtone on uh, iTunes and, and the droids. So if you want the beer science ringtone, from make sure you go from get a it. Can, why don't people <laughs> understand my inebriation? I kind of argue it's like the best ringtone ever. It's got to be. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to argue that opposite point. Yes. <laughs> that counterpoint. Yeah. There you go. <laughs> You're quite the debater. Yeah. Master. It's a beer. Please, yeah. Probably yeah. a master at the, at the yeah. debating. Yeah. yeah. There you go. So get our ringtone on, on your platform there. And don't forget when you're uh, hashtagging and tweeting and doing all that stuff with your beer pictures, hashtag show us your beers. Yes. We want to see what you're drinking. Tag us in it. Please. Hashtag and all that good we stuff. We want to see those beers. That's right. All right. Uh, for Dan's sake, let's talk a little beer. Grab yeah. your libations, pals. It's time for Beer of the Week. And if you're drinking well, you know that you're my friend and I'll say. I think I'll have myself a beer. This is our co-beer of the week. They're, they're sharing the, the spotlight. Ah. So uh, we have two. The first one I chose because I believe it was last week we talked about uh, Bell's Brewery knocking Russian River off the uh, off the mountain of best brewery in America. Right. And I thought, how pervert would it be? On America's Day, 4th of July. There you go. Oh, there you wow. go. That we have America's beer. That's some oh, forward yeah. thinking right there. Right? Yeah, it's America's I, beer. I put about a half a second of thought into that. <laughs> yeah, I can tell. Yeah, <laughs> and it shows. So yes, we, it does. We are drinking Bell's Brewery. The beer is called Smitten, or as Scott would call it, Smitter. 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 Uh, Smitten. It's their Golden Rye Pale Ale. Then you make their fucking end better. Yeah, it needs yeah. to be a more prominent. Yeah, end. that's right. It looks like yeah. an R. Because otherwise, yeah, I would think it is yeah, Smitter because that right. is a thing. I'll go to the liquor store. Hey, you guys got any Smitter beer? And they're going to like laugh me out of there. They're like, are so. you getting racial or something? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that means. Yeah. Yeah, so uh, get Smitten. yourself some Smitten. Anyways, yeah. so we're drinking Smitten. It's a Golden Rye Pale Ale. It's I'm 6%. Smitten, 
Uh, it's got an 85 on Beer Advocate, which oh. uh, I think is a little low. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, I think like what we do is we kind of have a lot of like IPAs and things of that. I mm-hmm. think we don't, you know, this is uh, a style we kind of rarely have on, I think. Is, you yeah, know. golden rye pale. Correct. Even just a pale in general. Yes, exactly. This is one of those, uh, if it's a hot day out, crack this bitch open. That's right. Yeah. Like, it is light. It is crisp. I don't get a lot on the nose, but my, my taste buds are picking up a little citrus. A little bit of hop, just a, just a little bit of hop towards the end there. It's nice and crisp. You know, you got that rye in there. Yeah, it's it's uh, not totally see through. No, it's got a little bit of darkness. Nice to it. golden fl- uh, color to it. Mm-hmm. I like it a lot, and I think that it got the lower. I mean, not the eighty five is a bad score, but I think right. it got the lower score because it's not an IPA. And it's not kicking people in the teeth. Yeah. yeah, people know, are very anti light beers for some reason. Yeah, I know. Yeah, you know. Yeah, I might have to revert back to that now. Yeah, make that a thing. All right, they are, they are getting cooler though. They are. Like I've noticed. You know, I'll talk about my trip to San Diego a little bit, but a lot of the brewers down there are like, "Yay, light beers!" and they're mm-hmm. making a lot. So, mm-hmm. I don't mean light in flavor. I mean light in color and easy, yes. easy drinkability. God, I love me an IPA though. Mm. Oh yeah, who doesn't? <laughs> but could right. you imagine like? Sitting at the lake when it's, you know, 95 degrees out. You crack one of these babies open. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Good flavor. Light. Goes down easy. 6% while not a huge percentage. Mm -hmm. Hey. You don't taste it at all. Right. Yeah, it it goes down real easy. Yeah, anything over five is good in my book. Mm Mm-hmm. Give me that. True. Anything over 10 is great. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. So that's our beer of the week. Uh, before we get to crotch talk, I will tell you guys we got beer girl coming up. She's joining us. Cool. We got, we got some sports to talk about. Uh, old time of the word of the week, of course, beer babe of the week. It's the most important part of the show. Yes. Oh yeah. Uh, some booze news. We even have an email from a listener that we must get. Oh to. nice. Yes. Right on. Uh, someone has a grievance with us. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. Maybe I should do their email during crotch talk or something. Uh, yeah, yeah. Maybe. You got I a can't grievance. imagine anybody having a grievance with us. Yeah. I don't. Well, how could you lovable old drunks? Yeah, I think of what I, we all said. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I guess you're right. You know, yeah. So let's do that. Let's just get right into grievances. I know. Yeah, we're all thinking about it. Yeah, <laughs> since have a we're all to share, it's time for a crotch talk. All thinking grievance right now. All right. So uh, we received an email the other day from Bo. Subject is horse racing. Oh, Bo. <laughs> Bo. Bo knows. <laughs> yeah, you know. <laughs> uh, hey guys, love your show. Of course. You never talk about horse racing. No. Yeah. Are any of you into horse racing? I love horse racing or anything to do with gambling. I guess I just love gambling. Oh, yes. oh wow. In fact, my wife is going to divorce me if I don't stop gambling. Oh, man. I don't beca- I don't care because I love gambling more than my wife. <laughs> later. <laughs> All right. Later. Yeah, well, hey. So does anybody like uh, horse racing here? You know, uh, uh, no. my buddy's trying to get me into that, you know, mm. and, and he keeps saying, let's go to the, the horse track and stuff like that. And it sounds like fun. It sounds like you could win a lot just by, you know, <sighs> putting a couple bucks down. It's not a big deal, but I don't know. It's not something like I actively watch or pay attention yeah, to, but. Right. I'm not much of a horse racing watcher. I'm not much of a gambler, so. Yeah, gambling. Yeah, I'll go to Vegas. I'll set a limit, and I'll you know I'll have fun. But yes. it, I'm not like, hey, it's Tuesday. I better drop some money on a horse or something. Yeah. That's where horse racing. I think I don't know. That's when I knew my buddy had a gambling problem. Is that he'd be betting on this game and that oh, game, and yeah, that was yeah. cool because he knew what he was. You know, but he's like, oh yeah, and then now I'm betting on these horses. I'm like, oh dude, like sounds like you have a problem now, yeah. man. Like, because <laughs> you don't know shit about horses. <laughs> like, yeah, the problem is I'm not winning. Yeah, exactly. I'd, yeah, I would guess if your wife is threatening to divorce you over your gambling and uh, gamble harder. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what, what what he's doing? So yeah, yeah. So I have to ask my wife if she's into gambling. If she is not, then I'll start. Yeah, that might change some some life decisions for yeah, you. I, oh man, because being an alcoholic it really didn't sway her anyway. <laughs> yeah, apparently you drank yeah. harder. He didn't do anything. Didn't do anything. She's Dang. still with me. Oh, mission failed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Well, thanks, Bo. I'm I'm sorry. I don't think any of us here are no, real sorry. into horse. You know, I've actually never been to the track. Right. I'm told it's a, it's a fun day. Mm-hmm. You go to the track Correct. and kind of get drunk and throw a few bucks down. Sounds like fun. Yeah. So maybe we should have once. a gentleman's field trip to the track. What the or fuck, something. man? That sounds great. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, I just I'm went, all in. Yeah. I, like, like everywhere I go, I'm with a group of guys and I just end up just like drinking the whole time mm-hmm. while they gambled. And Are there other things to do? Not that I know of. Oh, okay. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, they, they lost a lot of money betting on the horses and I just lost a lot of money drinking. Yeah. So I think I got my money. I was saying, you win in the end, though. Yeah, That's exactly. True. They, exactly. They walk out empty handed. At least you walk out with a buzz. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I stagger out. They walk out. So. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you win. You sound yep. like a winner. 
<laughs> that's what she said. That's what his wife says all the time. Yeah. It's a winner in my oh, book. You're a real uh, winner. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got some beer. I got some beer things to right. talk <laughs> <laughs> So I talked about this a couple weeks ago, and then we ran out of time last week when we did our uh, fat tire drink out drink up. Mm-hmm. Um, but I went to Ladyface's drink local event. Oh uh, yeah, for LA Beer Week. And it was really cool. I just figured I'd run down what I had real quick. It was uh, just a pairing with a bunch of guest beers and, of course, a Ladyface beer. And the cool thing was I got to sit next to all the brewers. Ooh. Yeah, just by chance. I, I got put at the table next to them. So really? it was cool listening nice. to them talk. Yeah. yeah. Um, at one point, they started talking about uh, Ballast Point. And it was hilarious. The one guy's like, you know why they got sold for a billion dollars? like, no, why? Was like, yeah, they came to them and said, like, we want to buy you for $175 million. And the guys had no intentions of selling out. And they go, no way. We're not going to sell out. You know, come back when you got a billion. <laughs> and I'm like, all right. How about a billion? Oh, man. And I go, shit, I guess we got to sell now. Oh, yeah, got to do it. Yeah. Wow. Makes, makes me hate them less. Hey. <laughs> and it, they, they tried to Dr. Evil them. And yeah. <laughs> it worked. One beer. You yeah. know. Too bad Ballast Point sucks now. Um, <laughs> and, but yeah, so they were just talking about all kinds of stuff. It was cool. So Eagle Rock Brewery was there, and they had the the Milo or Milo Oatmeal Pale Ale. It was so good. That was my favorite beer of the night. No, oh. it was really good, really well done, really great like uh, malt balance there. It was paired, and boy, did this take a little uh, mental getting over. It was paired with octopus salad. Ooh, no, oh god, I, I had a mental block on that. <laughs> that was I'm t- rough. I'm telling you, man, that octopus dude, it just tastes like like the fatty parts of a steak yeah the like not I, good parts yeah like the chewy yeah like, like, i don't know you know how you could have a steak yeah or you could have the shit parts of a yeah. steak <laughs> here's the octopus here's the shit parts of a steak that swim yeah wow. yeah like, like like the one time i had octopus at least it was like it was like in a spicy kind of rice medley kind of thing okay so like you know that was able to kind of kick yeah. it up and i was like hey i can dig the spice but this chewy shit i'm not down with like this yeah. is weird and that was like the main part was the octopus mm-hmm. this was in a couscous like salad thing and luckily mm-hmm. it was small pieces Mm. Uh, it was whatever. It, it was more mentally taxing than anything. Mm. Uh, the beer is really good. Like I said, it's got it had a great like oatmeal finish to it. it was real subtle um, and smelt hoppy, but didn't taste super hoppy. It had a little bit of pine to it. Uh, next was the El Segundo Brewing Ooh. slash uh, LABG Unity IPA, <clears throat> and this was really good. In fact, my lady friend who hates IPAs really liked it. Uh, the beer had a real hop. No, excuse me, malty smell toned down with the hops, kind of balanced everything out. It tasted. Uh, malty as it warmed up. Lots of citrus on the nose. Uh, the food that came with that was a mushroom terrine or terrine or something. It, it basically looked like mushroom dog food. Is like <laughs> <laughs> kind of like they like cut out a, a slice of fancy feast and put it on your plate, <laughs> and then they also came with like a piece of toast. Threw a mushroom in it. Yeah, yeah. and uh, you just like <laughs> spread it across your toast. Yeah. I'm not a mushroom fan, so it was just whatever. Correct. Uh, the lady friend loves mushrooms, so she thought it was pretty good. Raw oh, or well, grilled? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll I like grilled. That. I'm not too crazy about super raw. mushrooms. Yeah, she's into the, the shrooms. It's hmm. a me, Mario. <laughs> <laughs> Next up was Lucky Luke. We had their Billy Goza with melon, and this was cool. It was a Billy Goza. It was a melon Goza, and the and we had gazpacho with it. But the gazpacho was like a melon gazpacho. Gazpacho. Yeah, something you know, like the cold soup. Oh, never yeah. heard of it. Yeah, no. I've it's heard like, of gazpacho. Why the hell is this soup cold? <laughs> yeah, it's like cold, send it back. Cold tomato soup. It's but from Russia. Send that shit back. I want my soup hot. <laughs> yeah, I, I complained and they looked at me funny. Um, but it was cool because the soup was like melony at first and then tasted like spicy and tomato and kind of went with the, the melony beer. Uh, the goza was funky and tart smelling, lots of citrus tartness, good carbonation, and uh, no funky flavor, luckily. So that was cool. Course number four was Celador Ales, good centennial barrel fermented Saison in wine barrels dry hopped with centennial hops. With my favorite food of the night, bison toast. Ooh. There you go. There yeah. you go. It was a piece of bison on a piece of toast. How was it? With some hollandaise. It was good. Was it? Yeah. You know, it's funny because uh, on the trip that I took, which is supposed to be bison country, we mm-hmm. tried to find somewhere that would serve bison. They we, do it. we never could. We oh, I love bison. It's That's so garbage. Yeah. I, I still haven't had it. Yeah. Had buffalo, like, buffalo burger. I'd be like, where's my bison, damn it? <laughs> <laughs> we did that, and uh, they threw us out. <laughs> <laughs> it was good. And I was talking to the chef afterwards. I was like, what was that holidays? He goes, oh, it was a beer in days. Ooh. So we made a holidays with beer in it. Nice. Like, oh, that's awesome. There you go. Um, the beer itself, uh, what uh, was my notes here? Smells, oh, smells like a typical uh, sour 
Uh, Barrel really toned down the Saison qualities in a nice way. It was really toned down. The Bison really brought out the good quality of the Saison. Of course, five, I'll start moving faster because people are probably bored at this point, was Ladyface's own King Lear English Old Ale Ah. with a savory crepe. Uh, This was the best pairing. So not necessarily my favorite beer and or favorite food piece, right. but by far the best pairing. Hmm. Uh, the crepe had some vegetables in it with some peppers and stuff. The beer uh, made the the food better and vice versa. Uh, it was just a, it was a great example of an old English ale, a little boozy, you know, mm. malty. It was good stuff. Some like interesting foods on tap there, man. Yeah, like, they go crazy when they yeah, do these dinners. Apparently. That's why I figured I should report on it. I was like waiting for like a burger or like- Yeah, you know, no, like, not- oh, The last time we went, we had rabbit. Really? What the yeah, hell? it was really good too. Wow. Yeah, and then finally the last uh, course was Simsy's Brew Pub, uh, Simsy's Porter, and that was with spoon bread, raspberry, and chocolate little cake thing. Um, the beer had nice coffee flavor and smell. Ooh. It was a little over carbonated for my liking, which really thinned out the mouthfeel. But the flavor was nice. So it was good. Um, the cake was like a cornbread base. And it was, a, you know, spoon bread, so it was like real rustic, quote unquote. Smelling me some cornbread, boss. <laughs> you gonna eat that cornbread? <laughs> so, uh, not my favorite course, but uh, all around it was a good time. So, I figured I should let everybody know about that. Um, if you guys are in the, you know, LA region, check out Ladyface's website. They do different dinners and pairings and all kinds of stuff all the time. And it's always a good time. And this is luckily one of their cheaper events. It's only like 35 bucks a person. Oh, nice. A lot of times they get real pricey, but they're always fun. And, and the price through ones, they usually you have no problem refilling your beers. Oh, okay. And well, you gotta, hey, man. Yeah. You, Paid you, up, man. You don't want to drive yourself to those ones. Uh, but it's a good time. Uh, also, went to the Dodger game last week at Dodger Stadium. I was very pleasantly surprised to see that they're up in their craft beer game. I had myself a couple of locals, oh, yeah. like in Angel City and stuff. Correct. Uh, not at every stand, per se, but uh, they're up in their game. Of this course, it's costing $90. Th- this is in uh, San Diego? No, no, this is in LA. Oh, at Dodger Stadium. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Doing it up. Doing then it the following week, last th- this most recent weekend, I was in San Diego. Dodgers were in San Diego. I thought, well, I want to complete this oh, little there you circle go. jerk fest. Yeah, <laughs> and uh, went to the Dodgers-Padres game on Friday. And the cool thing was they were doing beer fest night at the stadium. Nice. So for two hours before the game started, it was, uh, you know, like five, five, yeah, it was five bucks a beer. Mm. And a bunch of local breweries were there, which, you know, is a third of the price of beers in the stadium. No kidding. So we... We loaded up beforehand. No kidding. Yeah. There you go. We loaded up beforehand. They only needed like one or two throughout the game to kind of keep the buzz going. Of course. Um, it was great. Stone was there. Uh, wow. Mike Hess was there. I found this new one called Epig. E-P-P-I-G. Epig. Epig. Uh, not epig. epic, but epig. 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 Um, really good stuff. Hmm. So good epig. that I found the brewery the next day and ah. ventured in. Oh, okay. Really good stuff. Um, who they knew or something? I had never heard. They've only been around for a couple of years. Oh, okay. Um, who else was there? Uh, it was funny. They had, it's kind of like Murder's Row of, of sellouts. It was Ballast Point, Modelo. <laughs> it was, I took a picture. I'll post a picture on our social media. It was, like, and it was all in one section, too. Like There was the whole area of all these great beers. Belgian Beaver, Mike Hess, all these local San Diego breweries. And then off to the side, all by themselves were these sellouts. No, like Ballast man. Point, Modelo, and... Um, who's the Bud White? I think it was like uh, Legion was the no Ten Barrel. That's the one that just oh, sold okay. out. And it was just hilarious. Like, oh well, there's Sellout Row over there. Yeah, good job, guys. The locals know what you did. Yeah, exactly. It was, <laughs> it was funny to watch everybody not go over there. You'd see a few really? people going. Yeah, you'd see a few people. They tended to be of the older persuasion. Yeah, uh, I I think they like what they like, and yeah, yeah there's no change in their mind. Mm-hmm. But uh, and they just probably don't know or care. Correct. But I'm thinking, like, if, if all beers are $5, what are you doing at the sellout table? No yeah, kidding. exactly. It's not like they're cheaper. There's no advantage. Come on. Um, so, anyways, that was a good game. That was the game that uh, Dodgers manager got kicked out, and I had no idea why it was <laughs> we were watching live. It looked like Puig was starting to fight, but apparently Roberts was going crazy. Oh. So, that was a good time. Uh, and then yeah, finally, that was a, a manager on manager fight. That was yeah, interesting. It didn't look like because P- Puig was walking up to bat, and then, like, the bench is cleared. Yeah. And we didn't see the two managers off yelling at each other. Like, it was kind of out of our field of oh. view there. And so everybody in our area was like, oh, what did Puig do? What did Puig do? It's like, oh. And it's a likely thought that Puig yeah, was starting Puig, to fly. Yeah, what did he do now? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So, it was a good time, though. Yeah, it's funny because I was watching the game. Right. We were talking about how Roberts used to be a coach for the Padres, and then mm. him and the manager got in, the manager for the <laughs> Padres got into it. And now they don't Dist like players is yeah. what he did. You don't Bitches. diss my players, bitch. You and me. That's what he said. You can read his lips. It's you and me. It's you and me. Is that what he said? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah. And he got suspended for saying you and me over and over again? 
Stupid. Yeah, I know. Hey, fuck, man. Fuck I know. He's trying me. to, hey, he's trying to keep the dugouts clear. Just right. Me and him, let's do it. Yeah. Yeah. You, you guys can say the dugout. Down. That's right. It was great. Man, the bullpens were empty. I know. It, it, it was, was insane. insane. <laughs> it's, baseball fights are funny. Yeah. I, I know we're not talking about sports right now, but like I said, I was watching a game and then, you know, the two managers were drawing at each right. other and then the, you know, the benches come out and they're starting to walk back and up. Oh, here's the bullpen. Yeah. <laughs> oh, <shit. laughs> they're like on a tape delay back there or something. It was hilarious. <laughs> It's like well, you guys. And then they got to run back, right? And I was like, Man. idiots, <laughs> idiots. And of course, no one actually ever hits anybody. Nah, it's just a bunch of like dancing around. Yeah, <laughs> I wish somebody would hit somebody. Uh, finally, and I'll I'll end this quickly because I'm sure people are tired of the drone in my voice. But uh, <laughs> I did some brewery hopping while I was in San Diego. Of course, uh, hit up 30th Street in North Park, which is just it is just crawling with breweries. Um, and we just went up to we walked to one end and just walked our way down and and made it home somehow. Uh, we hit up, uh, ben- well, first, before we did that, the days before we went to Benchmark and Helix and did interviews. I did interviews at both those places. Those will be coming out fairly soon. So we started our, our crawl on 30th Street at Fall Brewing and just worked our way down. We hit Fall, uh, Barn Brewing, Poor House, Pariah. Or and- the- oh. Where's Julius? <laughs> <laughs> Was that the word? <laughs> yeah. Uh, went to Pariah and then Epic. Which was great. It was cool. Epic, Pariah, and San Diego Brewing basically share a billion. Three tasting rooms in one building. Ah. So you can kind of hit those real nicely. And I made sure to find Epic because of having them at the game. Yes. Uh, Pariah was really good, too. Went to Rip Current, Mike Hess, and then ended the night at Modern Times. Finished off my night with a black house. God damn, that's so good. <laughs> uh, then on our way out on Sunday, went to uh, Society Brewing because every brewer that I talked to in San Diego said, I was like, where else should I go besides you guys? Like, oh, go to Society. And so we finally found it and went to Society, and they're really good. Oh. And on our, our last stop on our way out of town was Second Chance Brewing, and they were surprising. They were so good, I bought some cans and brought them home. So uh, really good stuff. Right on. Love, love, love San Diego. Hell yeah. Mm-hmm. And I have to give a shout out and a thank you to, uh, on Twitter, I don't know how to say it, Irv's Daisy Guy, E-R-V-S-D-A-I-S-E Guy, G-U-I. Um, I tweeted out like, hey, who's got some unknown breweries for me to go to in San Diego? I'm not looking for, you know, Stone and Modern Times. Mm-hmm. I'm looking for some unknowns. And uh, our buddy Alex in Florida tweeted at this guy who I guess is like a huge beer guy in San Diego. And he he recommended Society and Fall and, and both of them All right. were very good options. Right on. So it was a good time. All right, you guys can all get a nice little break from my voice because it's the beer girl oh, right. who's back, and she's drinking from Merca. <laughs> What's this? A bra drinking beer? Must be a she-devil. In light of our nation's independence being celebrated this month and because of the war happening in the beer world between the brewers formerly known as craft beer brewers who have been bought out by big beer and actual independent craft brewers, I wanted to talk about Sam Adams Boston Lager. This beer effectively started a revolution and really created the foundation for the craft beer world that we enjoy today. So Jim Cook found his great-grandfather's recipe for a distinctive style of lager, and it was a pre-prohibition uh, recipe, so it was, it was very different than from what people were drinking at the time. When he started the brewery, there really wasn't anything like that happening. It was all big beer, and he showed us that American beer can actually have character. And it, it really grew from there. Now, Boston Lager, when we drink it, it doesn't taste revolutionary. We have so much variety now. and But we really do have the Boston Lager to thank for that, as well as some other ones. But the Boston Lager was really a pillar in that movement. Boston Lager is a Vienna lager style. It's 4.9% ABV. It's very bready. It has a little bit of hop spiciness, but overall it's an average beer. It's very drinkable, but it's nothing to get super excited about. The best part of the beer to me is its history. Uh, When I drink it, I feel like I taste a revolution. (laughs) It is a solid American beer and one that we can all drink proudly. All right, I will see y'all next time. Because America. That's right. Mm, Beer right. girl just went America all yeah, over everybody's yeah, ass. She did. Some Baston Lager. <laughs> <laughs> Who wants a Lager? Lager. Lager. Baston for beer. Love it. <laughs> uh, you guys make sure you're following It's the Beer Girl at? 
easy enough. It's thebeergirl.com. There you go. All her write-ups. And she's doing some really cool write-ups for some local breweries in Asheville right now. You should uh, get on that. One of them is doing this cool smash series. It's single malt and single hop. So each beer only has one malt type and one oh. hop type. It's kind of cool. So she did mm. a write-up about that. That was that was really fun to read. Cool. Follow her on all the uh, social medias. Easy enough. It's the beer girl. Find her there. Nice um, and easy. Nice and easy. So, and I have to say, uh, Bast and Lager, not my uh, not my <laughs> go to beer by any means. Right. But Sam Adams, I do like their uh, their seasonals. Yes. They do some good seasonal beers. Agreed. Mm-hmm. So, anyways, should we talk a little sports? Let's do it. Yeah. Whether it's the Baltimore Chop or the One Two Punch, it's time for sports. We'll brush upon this quickly, <laughs> but uh, the balls. The Ball family, <laughs> yeah, uh, blessed us with their presence on Monday Night I just, Raw. I just like on the rundown it says the balls are on WWE. <laughs> That's right, yeah. <laughs> finally, yeah, the finally. balls. WWE got some. Balls. Ron Burgundy was the balls. Yeah. <laughs> God damn, they're ridiculous. <laughs> A little bit, yeah. well, or just Lavar. Lavar, I feel bad for Lonzo. Looked like yeah. he was awkward it's just as fuck. Yeah. yeah, I hope to God that it's all Lavar and that he's going to be a good player and I not think cause so. drama and just. But you know, we'll seems see. like a pretty good dude. He's just letting his dad do what he wants, man. Yeah, and then the little brother dropped a couple in bombs. Oh, <laughs> that's right. Yeah, they kind of had it. What do you want, man? Apologize you, like for that. seventeen, eighteen, or whatever. who knows? It's live TV. What are you doing? Exactly. Uh, Phil Jackson. No longer employed by the Knicks. About time. <laughs> wow. Yeah. wow. That train, train wreck went on long enough. That was so funny, man, because it was like when he got hired over there, everyone over here in L.A. was so sad, and everyone in New York was so rejoiceful, and it was just like, dude, like he's a, he's an amazing head coach. Yeah. Yeah. You know, but it's like this he's a rookie team president. I mean- Yeah, that, nobody I, knew what he yeah, could do I, as I a GM. I had said that, and then look what happened. He's fucking garbage as a team president, period. Mm-hmm. I mean, his one thing he did good was sign. He got Porzingis. Like that was a good draft pick. Yeah. Right. Other than that, I mean, Jesus Christ, big mess, big mess. Yeah. It, it, New York is just. I mean, the, the starting from the owner on down, it's just a mess. Right. I think that's I mean, the main problem. I, yeah, Dolan. I mean, he's he's just such an idiot. He know? really is. I mean, I mean, you can basically trace. I mean, I mean, you you can blame Phil Jackson, and before him it was Isaiah Thomas, and before him it was somebody yeah, else. Yeah, exactly. But who's the one? Dolan. Dolan Dolan's been there. Dolan. Get I mean, the yeah. fuck out. imagine you know Jimmy Buzz being the sole owner of the yeah. Lakers, and that's that's Dolan. He's just such a fucking idiot. Yeah, guy, get out. Yeah, him and Jed York need to get on a plane yeah. and crash <laughs> into the ocean. No kidding. Uh, but the the greatest part about this was Phil Jackson worked for the Knicks for twelve hundred days. Was paid sixty million dollars, and that came out to fifty grand a day. <laughs> God damn! Man. Wow, must be rough, right? <laughs> Jesus, you know, I I said it. I'd I'd have taken half, and I no could have fucked it up at least as bad. Are you serious? I'd have took and a y- day's work. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> give me that. You know what? I I sometimes you know because they like show him like when the Knicks are playing on TV, and they show. I don't think he really just gave a shit. He's no. like, yeah, well, fuck it. Whatever. Hey, I'm zinning yeah. out right now. Yeah, I'm Zen right. master. Yeah, I'm zinning right now. Well, fuck, he got paid anyways. No it's kidding. all guaranteed. It's I mean, like, so if he doesn't do good, they're just going to terminate him and he collects a check. Yeah. He's rich as fuck anyways. No kidding. Lives mm-hmm. on a cabin in Montana. What do you think he needs all that money for? <laughs> yeah, his house costs a whopping $19. Exactly. Yeah, who knows? Maybe Genie will let him fuck her again. I mean, oh, hey now. Uh, Derek Fisher was officially arrested for DUI after Fish. flipping his car a few weeks he back. Flipped Matt Barnes' I'm car. I'm sorry. Yeah, it wasn't <laughs> his car. <laughs> yeah. God, he continues to ruin so his funny, life. Man. I love it, man. That is so oh, funny. God, Fisher's he's a hero. <laughs> Matt Barnes? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, deep. Neither, neither of them are heroes. No, they're terrible people. But it's kind of awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know, it's funny though. I will touch on this. I mean, it's like I kind of feel like Fisher, like. He's kind of degenerated. Like at least his image has always kind of been of you know kind of squeaky clean. But like, mm-hmm. I mean, he's really coming out like yeah. a dirtbag. Oh yeah, like lately, really yeah. bad. You know what's funny? And, and maybe this is because we're Laker fans. And those of you listening can tell us yes, it's because you're Laker fans or no. Mm. Uh, they he really did a good job of overcoming that press when he left Utah. You know, but that's the nobody thing. thinks like, oh, what a dirtbag the way he left Utah. I, but, I will. Eh, I, kind of a I will say this: when he left Utah, he went from a good team that went to the Western Conference Finals to a crappy Laker team that mi- got bounced out of the first round. Right. So this wasn't a case like he didn't know we we're going to have Pau Gasol. He didn't know Andrew Bynum was going to play so good. He kind of just played here because it was L.A. You know, after that, when we traded him to H- U- uh, Houston. 
And then he said, uh, I want to buy out his contract because I don't want to retire. And they bought him out. And then he went to go sign with Oklahoma City yeah. and went to the finals. <laughs> it's like, right. you fucking asshole. That's right. It's like, I don't know. He's starting that asshole trend. Yeah. And it started there, I think. Yep. But, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, whatever. using his daughter as an yeah, excuse. He really yeah, he really did. He really did. She had like eye cancer or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, speaking of Oklahoma City, Paul George, now a member of the Oklahoma City Thunder. Soon to be a Laker now. Yeah. Because <laughs> you know he ain't going to stay there. I was worried. You know, there were talks that he'd go to uh, the right. Cavs. Yes. And I thought, oh, he's going to like this whole winning thing and he's not going to want to go to the Lakers. That's what I was saying. I say, if he goes to the Cavs, Celtics, or Rockets, we're doomed. Yeah. He went to the Thunder. Oh, my God. Thank God. But here's the thing. Him and the MVP of the league, Russell Westbrook, on one team together. I'll tell you who's more pissed about that trade. Russell Westbrook. <laughs> he does not want to play with another dude who's any good you don't think so no, he wants to average another triple double he's, really he's all, you think so because I, I think westbrook after last year i because westbrook was a team yeah. yeah and i think westbrook is like i need help yeah i think he's because he seemed legitimately mad when uh durant left y- yeah but i mean when he had durant did he give him the ball no well, no and i think I, that's why i think last year he learned his lesson because i don't think he wanted durant there i think he wanted to be the you guy you think he learned a lesson by winning and, the mvp <laughs> Yeah, well, because <laughs> you know I, mean, I, mean? <laughs> but I mean, look at him. He 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 shouldered the whole team. Yeah, on his back, mm-hmm. and he and look where they ended up. I mean, you know, they yeah. Did, and he's like, uh, you know, I we can't do it with just me. Yeah, and, well. and, and I'm, I'm just speculating, right? right now. I don't, you know, if he's so. smart, he could reflect and realize that. But see, here's yeah. and here's the other thing that uh, I, some other people are talking about today mm-hmm. is they say, okay, well, Paul George is going to go to OKC and then go to the Lakers. But what yeah. if he goes to OKC and sees, hey, this Westbrook guy, he's good. Oh, man. Uh, and what if it you know, becomes a love connection or something? Well, yeah. now I'm hoping you're right and that Westbrook doesn't want somebody else good on the team. I, I, I think it's going to be. I think he's going to, uh, mid-season, he's going to be texting it, it Durant be, like, yeah. I hate this fool too. Could be. <laughs> I'm out of here. <laughs> I mean, hey, yeah. Uh, this, this Ninja Turtle looking <laughs> asshole. Yeah. 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 The yeah. WB frog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, wow. <laughs> and maybe he'll bring Westbrook with him. Yeah. To the Lakers. Oh, there we go. Hey, the rumor a week or so ago. Oh, my God. There's been so many rumors. Was that he was calling Clay Thompson saying like, hey, homie, you want to come be, yeah. uh, be with me on the Lakers? Because <laughs> Clay's up in a couple years. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, and, and I'm wondering how the Warriors are going to pay everybody. Well, they're not going to be able to keep Clay because now he's third fiddle. Right. You know, he, they've got Durant and Steph ahead of him. He might be fourth him. fiddle. Well, I heard somebody say that that uh, Green is above him. And I'm like, ah, I don't know. I don't know, man. Oh, I, don't know. I, I kind of feel like Draymond Green does more. He plays defense. Like, he's kind of like the spirit of the team. Or Clay Thompson, can he can catch fire. Don't get me wrong. But he's just kind of there to hit some open shots. He plays D, too, though. I mean, he's at both ends of the floor yeah, kind of guy. I would say Draymond, though, is the more lockdown defender. Like, he can guard, you know, oh, one Oh, Draymond's a five. defender. Yeah. Like, he's, he's your defense guy. But, right. But Clay will play both ends of the floor. I mean, yeah. You're not yeah. going to be passing the ball to Draymond. No, but I also think that Draymond kind of, the, the offense can kind of flow through him too as well. Like he's able to like make some nice crisp passes from the center position and sometimes the power forward where yeah. I think Clay is more the benefic- beneficial, benef- whatever you want to say. Beneficiary? Beneficiary, thank you. Yeah. I was looking for that word. Big of, words. Ha- of playing with three other all-stars and he can just kind of have the most wide open jump shots of all time. Yeah. Well, yeah. I think he can come be the star on a team, say. He really could. Well, He's a good player. Don't I, get me wrong. I, I'm going to say barring serious injury to the Warriors. I mean, who's going to knock him off next year? And then after how many rings does Clay have? And he's he a free agent. He's going to say, hey, you know what? I'm going to be the guy. I'm I agree with that. Number three, number two, number three. I'm going to be the guy. I agree with that. He wants to be the man. <laughs> Woo! To beat the man. <laughs> I don't know. Sorry. It didn't so Iguodala, did he sign with San Antonio or is he just talking to them? Iguodala? I, yeah. Didn't he re-sign with the Warriors? I don't know. I don't know. Because I know he was talking with the Spurs. He and, was. And I, was, I, I didn't know if he had ended up signing with yeah, them. Yeah, I think he re-signed. Okay. But I could be wrong. Because okay. I was going to say that would have been a mistake for him because he is a role player and he kind of yeah, needs yeah. to know his yeah. role yep. and shut his mouth. <laughs> yeah. But. yeah, when he got it, finals MVP last year. <laughs> Or two years, whatever it was. Well, they couldn't give it to two Curry. Two years ago, two yeah. years ago, yeah. But I was like, all right. I was wondering I, who they were going to give it to. Yeah. Give it to LeBron. Yeah, I don't I, care that I, I did. Yeah, I agreed with that. Give it to and LeBron. I hate LeBron, yeah. but that finals, yeah. LeBron won it. Yeah, I know. Tell me Iguodala held, held him to, what, 40 <laughs> points a game? Yeah. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> yeah, that was low, nuts. Low, low, low of <laughs> that was uh, nuts. 40, yeah. And real quickly, Chauncey Billups turned down, speaking of LeBron, the Cavs offer to be their oh, GM. Who wants part of that? Yeah, nobody. Yeah. <laughs> hey, you want to become LeBron's bitch? Yeah. Not only that, but he might be out the next year. It's the same reason why they couldn't get free agents when he was there the first time. Everyone thinks he's going to leave. Mm, it's true. You Nobody know? knows where he's going. Hopefully yes. he doesn't come to LA. By the way, Iguodala did sign at the Warriors. Okay. Oh, there we go. Thank you. Thank you, Scott. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not on my game. Thank you, Scott.
Scott. There it is. You're the hero that we waited for, Scott. Uh, oh, geez. What else? Um, oh, real quickly. Jim Irsay is in mid-season <laughs> form. Jesus Christ. As last week, he tweeted wow. a very graphic nice. nude picture of a uh, attractive young lady diddling herself. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> yes. Nice. Uh, he claims he was hacked. It was very much like a picture from like a porn or something. I like, like that. Oh. Yeah. Uh, who knows what it is, but it, it's Irsay. It's great. Uh, no Dodgers are, are starters on the All-Star what team. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Kenley Jansen taking to Twitter to let the fans know it's their fault. Bam. Good. Yeah. It's, it's your fault for not voting. Yeah, we suck. Hey, welcome to LA. <laughs> We're lazy. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. No we kidding. show up to the game late and leave early because traffic. Right. Yep. Yeah. We hired people to do that for us and we just yeah. didn't get around to it because we were tired. Can you Too imagine bad. Kershaw's not starting on the All-Star team? That is very strange. Yeah. Besides the others who should, I mean, we're not, I mean, Justin Turner's on the fence of even being on the team, let alone starting. Mm. Kershaw's not starting. Bellinger? He's not? No, yeah. he's not. Nobody voted. <laughs> but I thought the manager selected the pitchers. I think they can select some of them or something. Oh, I don't, I don't know. It's, it's an all-star but game that nobody watches. It's correct. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I in mean, the end, we, nobody cares. In the, yeah, in the but long the run, it's like. the meaning behind it just means that we're lazy. That's you know, true. Probably, if, you know, if I'm David Ro- Dave Roberts, I'm like, thank God. You know, I don't want these guys to go to the all-star game and get hurt. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, he's uh, thanking everybody right now. Mm-hmm. Good for them. Take the take the time off. Yeah. Why not? A little, little vacation over the weekend. Ballinger who's fucking breaking every record in <laughs> right. baseball. But, but he's not on the starting but All-Star. Not good at least the, the All-Star game isn't in Los Angeles. That's and true. Then there's no starters because yeah. that's the Lakers problem. And then on the other hand, you got Mike Trout who was very easily voted on to the All-Star game. He's like, well, my thumb still hurts. Yeah. I won't be there. Ooh. Yeah, good. Yeah. Good. Yeah. yeah. Smart man. Yep. You're a I, I think uh, the Angels told him, you know what? Do, <laughs> don't do it. Yeah, don't yeah. do it. Yeah. I, oh, not that they're going anywhere, but. Well, they're going places. Angels are like yeah. way out of it. Yeah. Hey, question for you guys. Did you know Pacquiao was still fighting? <laughs> you know, I didn't know that until he got he lost. Yeah. I didn't know that. I honestly didn't even know he had a fight coming yeah. until the day of. They were showing like the weigh-in and stuff at yeah. a bar I was at. I was like, I didn't know oh, that. Pacquiao's fighting? Yeah. Oh, he's fighting tonight? Yeah. And then I was at another, I was actually a brewery. Then I went to another brewery and the fight was on. And it was him and this guy, Jeff Horn, who's from yeah. Australia. And it's somewhere in like the ninth round or something. And I was going up for another beer. And the beer tender was like, man, it's not looking good. And I looked up at the TV. Pacquiao's face was just red. Oh, was it really? Not blood. It just He'd gotten punched a Apparently, he didn't know he was fighting either. Yeah. Because <laughs> I it, talked to some people that watched it. I didn't watch it. And, and they said that it was like Pacquiao the whole fight. Yeah. That's and not they, what I heard. Really? Everything I read was that Pacquiao just took a shit the first half of the fight. And then towards the very end, was really? like, oh, I better get some punches in so it looks like I won no, the fight. No, see, I, you know. From what little that I actually like watched, I the TV was behind me. It was going to take a little bit of effort to crane my head. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Didn't want to do it because it's just a boxing match. Right. Uh, but from what little I saw, every time I looked up, Pacquiao was not doing very well. Oh, really? Well. Yeah. Yeah. See, and I that's the way I look at it, too. And it's boxing, whatever. Right. We're not talking God. about sports. Yeah. I know. It's true, it's not man. Wrestling. It's kind of falling off, man. Yeah. If it ain't Triple G or Canelo, I really don't give a shit. Mm-mm. It's just not fun to watch. Not, yeah. No one, no Mayweather and uh, what's his name, Conor. Oh McGregor. yeah, well, okay, that's when. Well, I to and me, May, that's a joke too. Mayweather's really boring is. as fuck to watch too. All yeah, he does he is. is dance yeah. around I the know. ring. Yeah, that's, see, nobody that's, punches anymore. That's the problem yeah. with all the hype for Mayweather yeah. and uh, Conor McGregor. Is it's going to be the same thing? It's he's just, he's going to jab and run, jab and run. It's just yeah. turned yeah. into a ballet. It's going to be a big, a big disappointment as the Mayweather Pacquiao. Yeah, it's awful. It'll be hopefully Conor McGregor. My my guess with McGregor, like he's not a boxer. He's gonna forget some rules and just like get some fucking punches in there. And like, I think oh, you're not supposed for, to do that. If he can catch him, he's yeah. gonna forget some rules and catch some fucking right crosses to the face. I think maybe that's yeah. that's if uh, what's his name? Yeah, but punches. to answer your question, I thought Pacquiao was retired. I didn't yeah, know. I thought he was doing politics or some shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. no I think kidding. He is. I thought he was Steel singing commercials. He was like singing. <laughs> Filipino De La Hoya. You know? Damn. Does he have his own pager company too? <laughs> they catch him in fucking lingerie. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember when De La Hoya opened his own pager company? No. <laughs> it was in Oxnard. Oh, that's right. <laughs> now it's a church. My buddy used to, my buddy, some fucking oh, yeah. bully of the school used to work there. That's right. Oh, really? That. Yeah. Oh. Fucking asshole. Yeah. Raymundo, you fucking <laughs> fake ass Debo. Oh. <laughs> Calling you out, Raymundo. Yeah, you yeah. bitch. Oh, fuck you. you. Out front. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Catch me outside. That's right. <laughs> uh, Tiger Woods, everybody, says that he has completed an intensive program. For what? For his whole like prescription drug issue. Oh. Yeah, he got the DUI thing going on. Uh, oh, good he, for him. He's been saved. Thank God for mm-hmm. him. Yeah. Now get back there and 
do that excruciating sport that he plays. Yeah, he can go back to sucking at not playing a sport. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> go back to sucking at your hobby. Yeah, that's okay. right. Yeah. God dang. Go back to making excuses why every year you don't play in your yeah. little I like that. My back hurts. tournament. Yeah. My back hurts. You play golf. <laughs> <laughs> You're riding a golf cart, bitch. Right. I know why his back hurts. <laughs> yeah. That's right. Bent over too much. <laughs> oh. All right. Before we go any further, we have another beer that we're drinking. Nice. Uh, we don't we don't just do one beer around here. It's, yeah, it's the 4th right. of July. That's right. We're doing a couple beers. Got to do that. Dan brought in Lagunitas Little Something Extra Ale. And at first glance, as you brought this in, I thought, oh, you're bringing in the sellouts, the Lagunitas. Correct. And then I had uh, another thought of, ooh, this would be some good. Uh, well, here, let's play the song. From a bottle, from a can, why don't people understand my inebriation? Beer science. I thought this would be a good uh, little experiment because one thing I was very afraid of that it would happen to them as, as has happened to Ballast Point is that maybe their quality would go down. I thought, here's a good chance to try their beer. Since they've been sold out, it hasn't been long, so maybe it's still their uh, you know prepackaged bottles or whatever. But let's see how the quality is doing. Correct, and, and it is a uh, little something extra. Yeah, little so. something extra ale, eight point five percent, seventy two and a half IBUs, um, four point oh one on Untapped, and ninety two on Beer Advocate. Yeah, and I really dig the little something ale. Mm-hmm. That shit's the the business, but you know, let's try this extra this, now. This you is know like the saying? imperial version of that. Correct, eight and a half percent. It's extra with a explanation mark. Mm. Exclamation mark. Explanation. Explanation. <laughs> it's giving me an explanation. <laughs> <laughs> nice try. <laughs> I get a lot of. Um, mm. The hops are present. Hops are very present. Yeah. So oh, yeah, we have hops. Yeah, <laughs> hops have landed. <laughs> you get that, Scott? <laughs> <laughs> Those hops, man, they think right, right in the right in the teeth. I think mm-hmm. right in the old teeth. Yeah, mm-hmm. no kidding. And as as uh, that goes away, and you got a little aftertaste on your tongue, you get some tropical fruit in there. Correct. I think. Yeah, I don't know. I, man, I'm just digging the hops though. Like, I was like, I I, I I think it was because we had the ale, and I, you know, like I said, I was like, man, I love me an IPA. I was yeah. kind of starting to think. You know, it's like, drool. yeah, I need some, need some hops here, mm-hmm. and it's uh, man, this is doing the doing the trick. This here. is nice, yeah. I definitely get that that uh, tropical fruit on the end, very hoppy in the front, smells hoppy. Like you yeah, stick your nose in there, it's oh, like yeah. sticking your nose to a hot bag. Oh my god, I love it, so good. Mm, that is good stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, ninety two on BA. Really? Yeah. Oh wow, digging it. There you go. I dig it. So we've had it. We liked it. Yes. We'll have to see. Maybe we'll try some in a few, uh, you know, like six months or so yeah. to a year. Mm-hmm. It does only come out in the summer. We might have to wait a year. I wonder if it'll be different after they've, you know, fully Ooh. switched over to uh, new ownership. Correct. I kind of was oh, thinking about that, too. Point. Like, I wonder if the quality is going to have a little drop. I, I will say, you know, you were very sad that Sculpin has turned into a shit pile of beer. Yeah, I was. I was very sad when Lagunitas fully sold oh, out. Oh, yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Lagunitas. Yeah, who doesn't? Yeah. I mean, they're even their imperial stout that no one really, the coffee stout no one really talks mm. about. That's amazing. Just do such good work. They do. Lagunitas to then fully sell out. It was yeah. It's kind of a kick to the bee hole. Womp womp. Yeah, <laughs> a little bit of that. So, anyways, hopefully it stays on the up and up. We'll have to find out. Well, we time will tell. <laughs> time will That's tell. We'll have right. to do some more beer science. Um, in the meantime, old timey word of the week: fop doodle. <laughs> <Ooh. laughs> what? Fop doodle. All one word there. Papa doodle do. Yeah. Uh, it's an insignificant or foolish man. Mm. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Do we want to take it? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> she was giving him the signs, but that fop doodle didn't know he could have had the bubs. Uh, yeah, there you go. <laughs> what a fop doodle. Yeah, what, what a, a fop doodle. Fop doodle. What a fop doodle. Foolish man. She's showing her bubs right there, too. <laughs> Nothing. Dumbass. Nothing. Nothing. Dumbass. Speaking of which, Uh-oh. showing the bubs. All right. There's nothing better than a babe with craft beer. It's time for Beer Babe of the Week. This week's Beer Babe of the Week. Dan's laughing. Yeah, sorry. (laughs) This week's Beer Babe of the Week. Her name is Deanna. You can find her on the Instagrams at Deanna, D-E-A-N-N-A, B-Little. All one word, Deanna B-Little. All right. Hey, nothing she, little there. No. Here we go. <laughs> that is for sure. Uh, she's rocking a very nice pyramid. Yes, she, there you yeah, go. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. Looks like the uh, apricot ale. 
Little I tr- I try to notice the beers first, but it is very difficult. <laughs> I did have to zoom in to like not see the rest of the picture. Yeah, I'll be honest. Uh, but yes, she's rocking the tasty pyramid apricot ale. I haven't had she's that one. Rocking a couple of those. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you can follow her on the Instagrams at Deanna B Little, or you can just go to our social medias, where we'll definitely be posting that picture <laughs> at uh, the Unfiltered Gentleman and at Unfiltered Gents. On Twitter. I was like, on which one? Twitter. Yeah, that one. <laughs> yep, there yes. you go. So thank you to Deanna for being hot and drinking beer. Yep. Uh, all right. I think it's... Uh, oh, before we move on to news, I, <laughs> I've had... No joke. I've had multiple inquiries. This is what I was laughing about. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. I've had multiple <laughs> inquiries from people. How do I become Beer Babe of the Week? Hey. I, I guess it's a valid question. I, I That's a good it was, question. I thought it was fairly self-explanatory. Yeah. But maybe, you know, we've never talked about how to officially become Beer Babe of the Week. Correct. I feel like now is our chance. Uh, we should tell you that uh, it's real easy. It does not take a lot of effort. Step one, uh, well, I guess step negative one, be a, a babe. Yeah. Yeah, that, that helps. That likes yeah. beer. It's going to happen. Yeah, that likes beer. Uh, step step actual one, find a good beer. And I'm not talking, uh, you know, some sellout shit like, Bud, you know, no, no Budweiser's, yeah. no Ballast Points, nothing like that. Come on. Find a good beer. Step it up. Mm-hmm. Step two, take hot picture with said beer. Yeah, it can't just yeah. be like you, like, scratching your... <laughs> <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, 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 you know. <laughs> Put a little, uh, yeah. put a little cuteness into this picture. Yeah, you can't just be yeah. in your sweatpants taking a picture <laughs> with you with the craft beer. I mean, even the cute sweatpants, right? Yeah, yeah. the ones that say "juicy" on the yeah, 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 exactly, yeah, exactly. So, yeah, step one: find good beer. Step two: take a hot picture with <laughs> said beer. It's it's that easy. Uh, you can send it to us, or you can just tag us in it, and uh, we will of course see it and uh, thank you for it. And then uh, you'll become a beer babe of the week. And if you move up fast on the list, uh, no clothes is preferable. <laughs> There you have it. Hey, hashtag show us your beers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cans for cans. Cans for cans. There you go. That's right. Uh, by the way, we cannot repost pictures of nudity on social media. Yeah. That's so, okay. Hey. They'll take our accounts down. <laughs> but we'll talk about it on air if you we'll, like. We'll, we'll give you a great mention. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honorable mention. <laughs> <laughs> we'll describe it really well. <laughs> oh. Because we're already so good at describing beer. I know. Yeah. Oh, God. All right. Before we get into trouble, let's talk a little... Uh, a little booze news, if you will. Extra, extra, drink all about it. It's time for booze news. I love this story. The tequila industry, uh. which is a very like tightly knit industry. You, know, you can only have tequila if it's from tequila, Mexico. Mm. Otherwise, it's... Jalisco. Me- yeah. Otherwise, it's uh, mezcal. Correct. So the tequila industry is suing Heineken. Mm. Stop using our name. The Tequila Regulatory Council is threatening Heineken with legal action over claims that it's uh, one of its beers includes tequila. The council said that tests show there's no tequila in Desperado's brand beer, which is marketed as a daring brew flavored with tequila to make it refreshing and and wild. Mm. There's no link between Desperados and the tequila industry, the council said. The council said they've been developing a case against Desperados for 10 years and now have the necessary funds to pursue e- legal action. I say or you need to guy. find... Ooh, almost. <laughs> <laughs> I, say, I say they you need got a better... Out. Yeah. <laughs> they need a better hobby. <laughs> you know... No 10 kidding. years? Yeah, no kidding. Come on. Wow. Well, if they are using that crap shit that isn't really tequila, though... Right. Then, then I do have issue with that because have you had that shit? No. Okay, because I have that one. I've I had have... tequila flavored beer before, but not the Heineken oh, yeah, one. Oculto, yeah, right? Have you tried that one? Is that the one with like the, the skeleton yes. on the front? Yes. yes. Yeah, I've had that. Do you know it is? Dig it, dude. No, it's a little weird. Yeah. The agent in tequila barrels. I met, I met one of the reps. And oh, okay. He's saying like the agent tequila. Maybe he's, maybe he's full of shit. Mm. But the agent <laughs> tequila barrels and like it picks up the tequila flavor and stuff. Right. It was weird because, you know, if I want to drink tequila, I'm just going to drink tequila. Right, right, right. It, right. it tastes like, not even a good beer, but like a Corona aged in tequila barrel. Yeah, exactly. So it's like, hey, good tequila shit beer. Mm. How about I get good both? Yeah. And not mix them together. Yeah, and, and but like I said, even worse than that would be that shit because I've had it. I went to, uh, I believe I was in uh, the Dominican or something like that. Mm. And uh, my buddy, just without thinking, just says, hey, give us some shots of tequila. 
And he gave us some and, you know, the bartender and I took one and right away I was able to say, what the hell was that? Cause like, I should be like feeling something in my throat. You know what I mean? Or like, hey now. you know what I mean? Like <laughs> that tequila, like, ah, you know, the burn, you know what right. I mean? And I was like, I, I took it and right after I could say, what the hell was that? You did not give me tequila. What was that? And he showed me the bottle and it said that it was like to kill or it just like ended. I'm like, no, oh, that's, really? Yeah. I was like, How that's weird. not tequila. Dude. Was it mezcal? It must have been. I've had I, really I, good mezcal. Okay, because I thought it said. I'm sure to, there's really bad. I thought it too. said to kill. Is what interesting? It, yeah, and I was mm. just like, no, dude. I was like, well, what do you guys take shots of? And then they gave us some fucking rum. I was like, oh, thank God. You know what I mean? Oh, it was Dominican, like, yeah. Yeah, I was like, yeah, that's that's what I was talking about. Was Puig over in the corner? <laughs> <laughs> How long ago was this? <laughs> no. <laughs> but, to you, Puig. It was a trip, though. Interesting. Mm. Uh, researchers in Portugal, man, they're doing the Lord's work over there, have found that pork marinated in beer before being grilled had less carcinogens than uh, pork that was not marinated at all there you go so marinate your pork and beer everybody that's right. wow you know like like when you burn meat yeah. and you get the black that's carcinogens and it's not good for you oh uh but apparently if you marinate it in, in some beer first i have to tell my buddy that yeah, yeah. he always hooks it up with a pig oh tell there him, you hey, go. There I'll, you I'll bring go. the booze yeah. yeah you get the pig i bring the beer yep we'll inject him with some beer mm-hmm. i like it Beer it is. <laughs> uh, happy Oregon Craft Beer Month to you Oregonians yeah. up north over there. Mm. They're having over 450 beer-related events this month. Wow. Why are we not in Oregon? No kidding. Oh, God damn it. Good Lord, that sounds great. They're killing it over there. Yeah. Oregon's got some good beer. So hot they right do. now. Man, so <laughs> Portland's got some nice yeah. beer. We got Deschutes. Ooh. Fathead. Is it Fathead? Yeah, Fathead. Which I stumbled into because I was like, oh, what's this on Groupon? Fathead Brewery? Never heard of it. God damn, they've got good <laughs> oh, beer. Yeah, really? Really tasty. Mm. Uh, well, Silver Moon, we had uh, Jacob on the show a few months back. Correct. Very surprised I remembered his name. I don't remember anybody's name. Uh, we talked about earlier, Bell's taking Russian River over in the uh, best you know, beer in America thing. Mm. Russian River in a move of absolute class. Sends Bell's a congratulatory note and a bottle of Plenty wow. the Elder. That's nice. Oh, wow. That was nice. I wish they'd overtake us and then send us a bottle. Okay. Yeah, exactly. Well, hey, man. Case or two. We're yeah. doing work here, too. Yeah. yeah. The Lord's work. That's, That's right. That's right. Uh, new craft beer logo has been instituted by the Brewers Association. If you qualify as a craft beer, you get this new logo that uh, we'll post a picture on our social medias sometime this week. It's an upside down bomber. Inside the bomber says independent craft on the outside says Brewers Association certified. And it's supposed to help, uh, you know, educate people on like, oh, look, uh, you know, Ballast Point is not a craft brewery anymore right. or, or whatever. Oh, this one is and this one isn't, which I think is a great idea. And I think it'll help people that, that care. It'll help them pick out what they want to drink if they're trying to be like, oh, I'm not going to support, you know. Right. In and, Bev or whatever. And that was kind of my question too, was that, you know, was it going to... Uh, could could the ones that sold out still post that shit like hey we're still crap? It's like no, you really aren't. You know what I mean? Like, well, well I have the three qualifications to uh, apply oh, for the logo. Here we go. Here we go. Here yep. we go. <laughs> <laughs> three qualifications. One, the brewer must fit the BA craft brewer definition. There's three dots here. Small, which is annual production of six million barrels of beer or mm. less, which is approximately three percent of U.S. annual sales. Independent which is less than 25% of the craft breweries owned or controlled by a beverage alcohol industry member that is not in itself a craft brewery. So, Boom. So I guess right AB there. Ibev can own a quarter of your brewery and you can still use that tag. Oh, wow. That's how I read that. So you can't sell out all the way. Just just slightly. Just the tip. Well, <laughs> <laughs> just like Ballast Point originally sold 50% to Heineken. Yeah. Even that would have been too much to be a craft yeah, brewery. I like it. Uh, oh, no, I'm mean, sorry, not, not Ballast Point, uh, Lagunitas. Correct. Ballast Point went balls <clears throat> deep. Yes. Uh, and then traditional, a brewer that has majority of its total beverage alcohol volume in beers whose flavor derives from traditional or innovative brewing ingredients in their fermentation. Ah. So flavored malt beverages are not considered beers. Ooh, so Sculpin's out. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, no, no Jolly Rancher bullshit. Yeah, no kidding. The other two qualifications is two, the brewer must have an active TTB license to commercially brew beer in the United States, and three, breweries will sign a licensing, licensing agreement that will cover many bases, including if a brewery sells. If they are no longer a craft brewer, they aren't allowed to license the deal. They'll have to remove it from future packaging. 
Here's one interesting thing. As I told you, I interviewed uh, uh, Benchmark and Helix Brewing over the weekend in San Diego. I was talking to the guy, to uh, Matt and Rachel at Benchmark, and their big deal is like they've bought a year's worth of cans Ooh. ahead of time. Like it's cheaper to buy in bulk, obviously. Mm-hmm. So if they want to adopt this logo, it's going to take them a year. Oh, shit. Or are they supposed to throw away all these cans they've had printed already? Right. Yeah, so it's a very interesting thing. That'll be on the upcoming interview. We talked all about it. But I mean, they could put a sticker on there. I, I mean, I guess you can single-handedly sticker each can. <laughs> that sounds like a huge pain in the ass. Yeah, Recycle it. Yeah. Hey, man. So, uh, put it on every sixer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. there you go. Yeah. Put it on the handle or <laughs> something. Dang. Yeah, so. That's too bad. And then finally, because it's the 4th of July. Mormon faith. Thank you, Ben, for striking up. Yes. Yeah. Uh, it's right 4th of July. Cube. Yeah. 4th of July. Everyone's barbecue. We barbecued today. Yes, we did. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We had some wieners. That's right. Mm, I Chili. love wieners. Yeah. Uh, hot dogs, too. Yep. Hot dogs aren't bad. Oh, mm-hmm. They're good. Americans will spend an estimated $7.1 billion on food during wow. the holiday. Wow. Weekend. Wow. Of course we will. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <We're> Americans. <laughs> America. What else are we going to spend it <laughs> on? Yeah. Uh, let's see. Last, last year, Americans bought $804 million worth of beef. And three hundred and seventy-one million dollars worth of chicken. Wow! Up to How about man? bacon? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they should they should put that on. Oh, and bacon deserves its own. It statistic. should. Man, yeah. bacon's great. That's I right. Agree. I had bacon yes. today already. You did. I got a head start on everybody. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Texas is the number one burger and hot dog market. Texas. Uh, Texas. Oh, yeah? Of course yeah. it is. Grilling seafood is less popular than all those meats, but oh, still shit. bought. Yeah. Who wants seafood on the 4th of July? That's right. That's for that's pussies. Right. But we still bought $85.1 million worth of shrimp and $48.4 million worth of salmon, according to uh, the survey. Bubba Gump shrimp. <laughs> it's a household name. <laughs> Americans spent $43 million on barbecue sauce last Independence wow. Day. Wow. Topping ketchups, $37 Ooh. million. And mustards, low, low, $25 Uh-oh. million. Dollars. Wow. Love that barbecue sauce. Between barbecue, ketchup, and mustard, what's your guys' favorite? Barbecue. Barbecue. Really? Yeah. Mm. I love barbecue, but now that I don't eat sugar and shit, it's hard to find good barbecue sauce. Oh, yeah? Right. That doesn't have sugar. I found one brand that's pretty good, but mustard has kind of be- slowly become my go-to. Right? I like doing mustard. It up. Doesn't it, but it has, has to be the good mustard, not that bright yellow neon shit. Right. I want some like brown spicy mustard. Yeah, there you go. Uh, I mean, yeah. come on, dude. Kick it up a notch. I like my, my mustard like I like my co-host. Brown. Oh, there you go. <laughs> I like that one, though. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, it goes on and on to talk about what else people are spending money on. But uh, happy 4th of July, everybody. Yes. Hopefully you get drunk and you eat lots okay. of wieners. Yes. Yeah. Put those <laughs> Drunk wieners. and wieners. Put yeah. those wieners in yeah, your it mouth. It goes hand in hand. Yeah, it really does. Do it up. Yeah. Absolutely. That's all I got for everybody. Get drunk. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, God bless America. Yeah. Yeah. Blow yeah. something up. Yeah, yeah, blow some shit up. <laughs> Not blow your fingers, something. though. Yeah, JPP. Up. Yeah. Uh, if you guys uh, would fancy... I don't know where I was going with that one. If you guys would fancy an interview... <laughs> <laughs> Next week, I will be talking to John Gonzalez, who uh, is opening up Leashless Brewing. It's so hard to say fast. Oh, man. In Especially Vin- right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this baby's, uh, what is it, like 8 point what percent? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 8.7%. Yeah. Uh, anyways, Ventura, California, Leashless Brewing is opening literally Leashless. this week. It's on Saturday. They have a huge party and event going All right. for their uh, for their grand opening. You can check out more details on... We've posted something on our social medias, or you can go to theirs, uh, Leashless Brewing. Check it out. It's going to be a blast. going to have beer and bands and food and all kinds of good stuff. So if you're in the, uh, the Ventura, California area or anywhere thereabouts, you should definitely go to Leashless this weekend Hell and then yeah. next week you can listen to uh, the interview that we did and there you yes. go it was a good time and we talked all about his organic beers and all the things he's doing differently than other people so do check it out uh, that's it for us thank you for listening oh, God, it's a little rough yeah. night huh? yeah. swinging a miss yeah, yeah. Uh, you can check us out at the unfiltered gentleman I can't hit a hormone every time guys hey. <laughs> come on Bellinger I'm not Bellinger here. yeah TheUnfilteredGentleman.com. You get us on the social medias, The Unfiltered Gentleman, except for Twitter is at Unfiltered Gents. Of course, you want to hit that hashtag. Oh, yeah. Show us your beers. Yep. You can call us. You can text us. I would love for you to leave us a drunk voicemail at 805-538-BEER. Now, we're waiting on our first one, so Come be on. the first one. It's we- 4th of July, and we know you're getting hammered. This is perfect time. Oh, That's yeah. Right. No kidding. What Let's else are you doing it. today? That's right. Come on. Getting drunk, eating some wieners. Let's do it. <laughs> yeah. Leave us a drunken wiener voicemail. <laughs> yeah. It's the way to go. 
So, anyways, and uh, hey, you got some uh, beer, beer of the week uh, submissions? Yes. Hey, send them our way. Close optional. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> I think that's it. See you next week for the interview. And uh, ooh, when we're all back in the studio for episode, excuse me, batch fifty-three, that'll be our one-year anniversary. Bang. Oh my Look god! At that. Hit it up. At that. It seems like only yesterday. Mm-hmm. No kidding. I feel like I'm singing a I song was drunk. or something. Yeah. Oh, man. I'm Anyways, wait, it was. Okay. This is Batch 51. Hope you've enjoyed. Tell your friends. Stay hydrated. Mm-hmm. And on that note, good night, everybody. 